Town Hall and our citizens at home watching on TV. This is regular Wednesday, the regular Monday meeting held on Wednesday because of the holiday. Uh, it's October 13th. My name is Penny Carson. I'm chairman of the Town Council. May I have a roll call, please? Chairman Carson? Here. Councilor Berry? Here. Councilor Fritz? Here. Councilor McGinty? Here. Councilor Roberts? Here. Councilor Swift Kayata? Here. Councilor Watson? Here. Student Representative Bolas? Here. Student Representative Rowe? Here. Thank you. Pledge of the Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there any reports and correspondence from council members? Madam Chair. Yes, Councilor Watson. I'd like to um, thank the Town of Cape Elizabeth for sending several of us to the May Municipal Association's annual meeting that was held a couple weeks ago um, in Portland. Uh, it was, a, um, I think, a very well-attended event and um, had a lot of good sessions and, and forums um, in which uh, councillors could participate as elected officials as well as have a chance to interact with May Municipal employees um, and staff members, which was um, very advantageous, I think, for, for us as a town. And uh, uh, we had very good representation. Good. Thank you. I'm Chairman. Councilor Barry. The uh, county, uh, Cumberland County uh, Budget uh, Committee is uh, meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. That would be on Thursday, uh, the 14th at 7 o'clock in uh, the courthouse with the county commissioners to discuss uh, a continued discussion on the county budget for the coming year. Okay. Not, I represent the town on that. Thank you. Councilor McGinty. Um, I was not able to attend the addressing committee meeting they had last week, but I did see it on TV. And I believe everybody probably got the same letter I got from at least one constituent and maybe some phone calls from some others. And I want to make it clear, I said this from the very beginning, um, the original ordinance, addressing ordinance, the final decision on what the names of new streets would be was left to the addressing committee. We changed that so that the final decision would be left to us so that we could take the credit or the heat, as it were, would be, um, for those decisions. I said then, I, I said subsequent to that, and I'll say it again, that the numbering system, and by the way, you know, uh, honesty and advertising here, my address is not affected by this one way or the other. <laughs> so um, I'm out of the mix here. However, um, the numbering, I think, has to be done to make it uh, coherent so that the numbers go in the right way, north, south, east, west, etc. And that's going to be a burden on people. Um, the naming of streets or creating new streets out of private driveways. Uh, I'm not there yet on that. And I'm going to have to be convinced to, to name a driveway. If we can't find an address on Shore Road, right. why are we going to be able to find it if we change the name to Seahorse Drive or something else? Uh, either we know where it is or we don't know where it is. Um, and I think that should fall on our public safety people, our dispatchers, to know where these locations are. Um, so I want the, the, the citizens of Cape Elizabeth to know that I'm going to have to be convinced 100 percent to start changing the names of, or, or, or creating streets out of driveways, out of private roads, changing the names of streets. Um, you know, historically, I mean, if I said, where is Kettle Cove Road, probably everybody in this council in this town knows where that is, although there is no Kettle Cove Road, but we know where it is. To change that street to Kettle Cove Road uh, maybe isn't a big issue, but to start changing the names of other streets, Old Ocean House Road, for instance, which is at least historic, I guess, um, you got a long way to convince me, and I want the people of Cape Elizabeth to know that, <clears throat> that um, I need to be convinced, again, 100 percent, 
that it's in the best interest of the people who live there to change the name of a driveway or a road. Um, and on a lot of these, I'm not there. I think the addressing committee, they're trying to do their job. They've, they've taken their task seriously in the best interest of public safety. However, um, you know, I, I just, I moved about three months ago to a new, new home here in Cape Elizabeth, and my packet today has the wrong address on it. So if the town of Cape Elizabeth can't figure out where their town councilors live, I don't know where they're going to figure out where, um, where everybody else lives. So um, I want the people to know that uh, they do have an appeal. I think they should go through the process, send their letters, their emails, or whatever to the committee, fight it out with the committee, and, but to know that there is an appeal here to the town council. And certainly, I will listen if anybody else won't. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't say it any further than Councilor that. Councilor Barry? I agree with uh, John completely. I think that we should uh, respect the citizens' wishes. On, uh, if someone lives on Shore Road, they live on Shore Road, and there's no sense of changing it to uh, Ice House Lane or something. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yes. Madam Chair, I, I just have something to report. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I attended the uh, Battery Blair dedication at Fort Williams, and I just wanted to congratulate Al Barthelman and everyone else who was there, all the citizens and various town employees who worked so hard to make the centennial and that particular dedication such a success. I was very impressed, and I just want to congratulate them. It is. We have one of those impressive people with us tonight in our audience. Um, is there any more reports of correspondence? Yes, Councillor Fritz. Yes, um, I represent the town on the Regional Waste System Board, and from time to time I've reported to the council that I've visited and studied, been studying some sites around the country. And the Regional Waste System Board has, um, at its last meeting, agreed to go ahead with the purchase of equipment, meaning conveyors and balers and all kinds of uh, equipment to handle the recycled material that goes to um, the regional waste system. Um, and that's expected to be in place probably by the end of the year. Um, and once that's installed, I'd just like to encourage um, teachers to think about taking their students on field trip to visit um, the, our regional waste system facility, the incinerator and this new very um, efficient way of handling recycled materials that um, I think will be quite an education. Um, parents very often take their kids to the dump and they see where the trash goes, but I think they need to be very aware that that's not the end of it. It doesn't just go down the hopper. There's a whole lot of processing and expensive processing and it's an expensive thing to deal with our trash. So it would be very good education. Thank you. Uh, Town Manager's report, please. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. I wanted to mention a couple of items this evening. Uh, the Council has uh, on the dais this evening a copy of the preliminary statement for the bond uh, for the pool and for the public works garage. Uh, that is, uh, we're accepting bids uh, next week on those, so if anyone is interested in purchasing bonds uh, that, for the Town of Cape Elizabeth, uh, they should speak with their stockbroker. Uh, or other person that they acquire bonds from at this point. Uh, we, we chuckle about that, but uh, in the past, whenever we've had bond issues, uh, there's been a uh, reasonably high number of Cape Elizabeth residents who have uh, sought those bonds and uh, wish to invest in the community, and we appreciate uh, those investments. And uh, we don't appreciate as much, I heard on CNBC when I was home, that the interest rates are at the highest level that they've been in two years, the 30-year the uh, T-bill. Uh, in, in two years, the highest point in two years. Uh, but nonetheless, if, if one looks at the, the interest rate curve uh, for the last year, it's been a steady progression upward. Uh, so there's no reason to think, even though interest rates are higher than where currently we, we might have hoped, there's no reason to expect that they're going to be going down soon. Uh, so anyway, we, we closely monitor that. We monitor it every day. Uh, the 30-year the Treasury note is currently at uh, 6.28 as of the close today of the bond market. Uh, while that isn't the rate we borrow it, we borrow it less than that. We're, we're, with the yield curve, it's slightly less because it's 20 years versus 30 years. Plus, also, it's, it's less because it's tax-exempt, uh, the interest earnings. So, but nonetheless, uh, 
uh, that is something that uh, we're going to be looking at. We also are going through the bond rating procedure. We expect that to be uh, completed uh, tomorrow or the day after uh, so that the town will have its bond ratings updated. Uh, secondly, I wanted to mention uh, the councilors have a, a letter in their packet that I sent to Tom Fasella, the new, uh, Dr. Tom Fasella, the new superintendent of the schools. John Ridge, a member of the uh, school board, was studying his tax bill one evening. And he noted that uh, at the time the budget was adopted, it was said that there was an eight cent decrease in the school budget. Uh, he looked at his tax bill for a year ago, and he looked at his tax bill this year. The total tax rates were absolutely right. Everyone was taxed the proper amount. The division on the tax bill, which is unofficial, this year is, is correct. Last year, it was not correct. Uh, the county was, was wrong because we usually don't allocate any revenue to the county. And last year, rep, partial revenue was allocated to the county. So, you know, John wanted to be, John Ridge, Mr. Ridge, member of the school board, wanted to be absolutely clear that the citizens knew. And I went to the school board finance committee. He had raised the issue. I met with them last night. He wanted to be absolutely clear that everyone knew, I think he wanted, that the school budget had decreased eight cents. Uh, I did explain to the school board that, you know, that it's not quite that simple and because you're not really comparing apples to apples because of, you know, obviously some the pool expense was transferred to the town. So, you know, I think for citizens' purposes, it's, it's really important, the, the overall tax rate. But anyone studying the bill, if they really want an explanation, they can give me a call or send me an email. <laughs> and I'd be happy to do it, but uh, uh, the, the division uh, is correct this year that's appeared on the tax bills, and also the total tax rate, what everyone based their taxes on, uh, was correct both years, which is the, which is the important factor. Any questions on that? I, I sent a letter to the superintendent. I know uh, Mr. Ridge might have called at least one or several of the town council members on that issue. Councilor McGinty. No, not on that, but if we go back to the bond yep. <clears throat> issue. As the rates go up, you know, the, particularly the Richards pool, um, you know, we had to kick in an extra almost half million dollars because of a bidding issue. How much more as rates go up, is, can you give us any indication how much more it's going to cost us in, in maybe Adam, taxes? I, I'm, you know, a lot can happen between to cost, we based it on 50 basis points more than was at that time. We, we assumed there'd be an increase in rates. We're now about 